with the youngest population in the world. Africa could not achieve universal healthcare coverage without taking into account the expectations and experiences of the youth. To talk on this matter, we were joined by Evelyn Carijo, Director, Youth in Action, AMREF. WAC Youth in Action is a fully youth-led, youth-driven initiative. Um, it began as a really brilliant idea where we said we want to make sure that young people um, have a voice and are really able to um, contribute to, to uh, meaningful youth engagement within the gender equality and sexual and productive health space. So WAC Youth in Action has been active for the last three years. We are focusing on three key pillars. One, ensuring that we provide young people with a common voice uh, when it comes to their advocacy prices. Two, ensuring that we equip them with capacity strengthening, uh, specifically focusing on advocacy strategy, um, monitoring evaluation and learning and organizational development. And thirdly, ensuring that young people have uh, the right space and really able to participate and contribute to policy processes. So our teeth in action uh, ensures that young people have a voice and are able to participate in policy processes. Our work has over the last uh, few years also hosted the Youth for UHC movement, which is the very first Pan-African movement of young people advancing UHC in Africa. Excellent. So when you speak about capacity building in terms of getting the youth involved when it comes to policy, what are these areas where you're looking to reform policy with the help of youth? I read it was about gender inequality and sexual and reproductive health. Uh, one thing we've ensured within our teeth in action is uh, making sure that young people are at the center of designing the interventions that we have as an initiative and as a program. So it's not us who really dictate what we do at WIAT. We make sure that the youth priorities and that young people are really driving the agenda of WIAT. And so even when we're designing WIAT, we had to get young people to really speak to the needs and the priorities within not uh, just Kenya, but also looking at uh, regionally and globally. And what we heard from the youth is that, uh, of course, they're dis disproportionately affected when it comes to quite a number of issues. If you look at HIV, for example, adolescents and youth have higher incidences when it comes to adult infections. If you look at issues such as teenage pregnancies, quite rampant here in Kenya and beyond, where we're talking about one in every three girls getting pregnant by the age of 18 and uh, many other uh, challenges that young people face. And so the youth say they want to participate in solving these challenges, but then they're not able to do that if they can't inform and influence policies. And so for us, we're looking at uh, equipping young people with these advocacy skills to influence policies. And then as a result, have this ripple effect where the health priorities of young people are addressed and to ensure that young people now have access to quality um, healthcare services, not just around sexual and productive health, but really broadly, ensuring that we end sexual and gender-based violence and ensuring that young people are able to live a productive life. Could you give us an example of how a youth body has been actually able to impact policy building, whether uh, in anywhere in Africa? Oh, we have so many examples, but I'll start with uh, here in Kenya, where I have seen the power of young people coming together to really influence policies. I have seen in regions such as Nairobi, which is the capital, the youth for the first time influenced the very first adolescent sexual and reproductive health policy within Nairobi County. In other regions, such as the pastoral regions in Kenya, we've seen young people advocating for the first anti-bidding uh, and anti-bidding uh, policy within that region, because anti-bidding is a retro retrogressive practice that really, um, um, uh, that really affects young people and which then makes young people get married off at an early age. We've seen young people in other regions such as uh, Kilifi in the coastal region being able to advocate for gender policies. Beyond Kenya, we have seen young people influencing policies even at the AU level. 